Hey, what is up everybody? My name is Chad and this week I'm gonna try and save you guys about $10,000. And not in a I'm dressing up in like a question mark suit and telling you how to get money from the government type of save you $10,000, but I'm gonna give you something that man I wish I would have had before I went to language school in Japan. So you're studying Japanese, you're like, hey, I found out about these language immersion schools, this is what everyone's talking about, I should go. Uh, uh, hold on one sec. Now I'm not gonna dog on language schools, I went to them, I do like them, but they serve a certain purpose, and I think that some of your resources could be better spent, not there, depending on what phase you are. So let me start this right off. If you are new to learning Japanese, you will not get a better start than going to these language schools. I, I can't say that enough. If you are, if you consider yourself a beginner, then go to these language schools. But if you have a basis in Japanese, you've taking classes for a while, you can read and write decently, you're anything past the beginner level, hold, hold off, hold off for a while. For some reason, and everyone I've talked to, as well as my own experience confirms it, that intermediate area is kind of weird to go to these schools at. The beginner's awesome. Um, when you go to advanced levels, when you're working on your N2s, your N1s, those schools help so much because there's a lot less people in those classes and it's more one-on-one -on -one and you can really work on that with a native. But until then, in that intermediate area, sometimes it's better to do it on your own. Now my estimate for when I went for that whole year from the times that I was in the intermediate section was close to five or six thousand dollars to, to coast through the intermediate section, let alone the other stuff that I was going from the late beginner to early advanced level. I don't want you guys to have to spend that. You could literally get, and I thought this in my head when I was in Japan, I could get the same education at home for next to nothing. And it was really frustrating. If you guys watch my Fluent Under One Year series, you'll see the frustration slowly building. I want to save you guys that frustration. So you want a language immersion experience? I'll give it to you. Get a pad and pen. Let's figure this out. I have my pad and pen ready to go. Well, pad, got a pen. First, there's a couple things you have to know about language immersion. It's not just, you know, dropping yourself into Japan. It is dropping yourself into the language by the name. You could do that anywhere in the world and you could do it relatively the same level for a lot less. And you might be thinking to yourself, but Chad, the street signs aren't in this and the blah, blah, blah aren't in this. You're not reading that probably unless you're in like a more upper level. So that really won't do anything for you. Frankly, you could get the same sort of exposure if you go to a Chinese restaurant and just see kanjis that mean nothing to you. Because that's basically the same thing. But that's beyond the point. We're going to talk about stuff that's actually helpful for studying and for saving you time. So I'm going to tell you exactly how we did class and you're going to be able to do it on your own for free or for very, very little. And I'm going to tell you how to surround yourself so that way you're maxing out you're reading, you're listening, everything else. First step, we gotta go into tech. What are you using? Do you have a computer? Do you have an iPad? Do you have an iPhone? Turn all of your settings to Japanese. I'm not gonna tell you how because there's a million different types of phones and million different types of computers. Uh, just YouTube it, how to turn language settings. Now this will just be for your system settings. You also wanna change it for any sort of app that you guys have. If you're using uh, Twitter, Facebook, I don't know, MySpace, if you're one of those old geezers that collect their pee in jars and, you know, they hate change. Whatever it is that you're using, make sure you go into their language settings and change that too. You want everything that you use often to be in Japanese if it's possible. Now, likewise, I lived in Japan. I was a study abroad student at a language immersion school and at, you know, Simon Gakko's that taught language. And I still used English. So it's not about getting English completely out. It's about maximizing the amount of Japanese that you hear, see, and use in a given day. Which brings us to our second step. Surround yourself as much as you can with the language. Do you like music? Cut in a playlist of Japanese music. In fact, I happen to have a playlist called Chad's Infinite Japanese Playlist. You guys can check on my playlist tab and it'll give you a good start. Go through it. This is all music that isn't just anime music. It's punk and rock and metal and hardcore and all sorts of great stuff that you wouldn't normally see on the internet. If you find a song you like, go into the recommended tab, go through a wormhole, pull all sorts of music that you've never heard before and create lots of big Japanese playlists. And it doesn't mean you can't listen to English music, just make sure you are supplementing your Japanese enough to be the point of what you would get in Japan. Like I listened to English music in Japan, but it wasn't the only thing that I listened to. Do you guys read books? Awesome. Uh, maybe sub in some easy stuff. There's if you type in Japanese children's books or PDF into Google, you'll find 
thousands of traditional stories that are, you know, open source, they're free to use, that you're not gonna get sued for looking at them. And you can read them, and they're meant for children, so they're easier language, easier dialogue, easier just about everything. It doesn't just have to be manga, it doesn't just have to be light novels or books, you can read children's books, you can go through any level that you want, and you can find a lot of it for free online. Again, not that you only have to read Japanese, because you will burn your brain out if all you do is flip the switch, okay, no English. You'll burn out, you'll get exhausted, your brain will get tired, just mix it in, have a healthy mix. You guys like movies? Throw in a Japanese movie night. Make sure there's no English subtitles. English will kill anything you get from this. That was my phone. Stupid alarms. If you guys watch anime, get rid of the English subtitles. Don't just, oh, I won't look at them. Like your brain will process stuff in your peripheral vision even if you're not looking at it. Get rid of it, and if you can, put Japanese subtitles on. Are you going grocery shopping? A great way to get exposure is now changing, hey, I'm gonna switch up from King Supers, I'm gonna go to an Asian food store. Anytime that you can shift from a English setting to a Japanese setting in life, do it. And a lot of people don't have that opportunity, but I know one great way is uh, Kiowa clubs, like, like conversation clubs. So I live in Colorado, I did a quick Google search, I found three different Kiowa clubs in Colorado that meet like twice a month. These are clubs you just go to and speak Japanese with other Japanese people, like it's, awesome and it doesn't cost anything. And with that, you need to be able to talk to people. You need a person who's Japanese to correct you and not just your Japanese friend who was born and raised in America, but like a Japanese person whose native language is Japanese. Have them correct you. One of the best ways to do that is have a conversation exchange pal, like a pen pal, but online or, or the internet or whatever. But Chad, how do I make friends? Uh, there's a great website that's free called conversationexchange.com. And to prove a point, Last month, I just went on there, I wrote the first person that I found. I'm still good friends with him. It's been a month, we write every day, we text each other, we send each other Snapchats, he follows me on Twitter. He's a great dude, and we exchange languages. I exchange English and help correct his English and teach him slang, because that's what he wants to learn, because you can't learn that in textbooks, and likewise, he does that for me. We could Skype, but I don't necessarily need to, um, but we definitely could if we want to practice speaking, and that's the same for you. So. Make sure you have that conversation exchange pal because he's gonna help you with part three. All right, you guys ready for the big secret? So I've been to a bunch of different language schools in Japan. I'm gonna tell you how basically all of them work. First step, get a method of learning. I recommend getting an actual textbook, one that can also be bought in Japan. Uh, this is the one that I did when I first started learning Japanese. This is the Genki One books. I think 80% of the market share of learning Japanese is either the Genki One book or the Mina no Nihongo book. There's a bunch of other beginner books, but that's like 80% 80 uh, 80 of the market share. So if I were you, go to a library, go to a bookstore that sells Japanese textbooks, pick up both, kind of flip through them, see which ones you personally prefer, you like the style, the fonting, the explanations make a lot of sense, and have that be your book. Now, with your conversation exchange partner, go over this book. How do you go over this book? Every language school that I've ever been to or seen or heard of basically works about it the same way. They go through about a chapter a week. So in each one of these books, pick out your chapter and figure out all the words you need to know in that chapter, figure out all the kanji you learned in that chapter, figure out all the grammar that's in that chapter, divide it amongst the days of the week that you study. If you study five days a week, divide it by five days. If you study every day, divide it by seven. If you do it two days a week, which I don't recommend, Divide it in half, and then every day, go over the grammar, go over the words, go over the kanji, and study them. If you guys obviously aren't new to learning Japanese, I recommend a spatial repetition flashcard app like Memorize or Anki. It'll save you a ridiculous amount of time and you'll be ahead of the curve by far. Then, at the end of every week, Skype chat your friend, or text him, or, or Discord chat, or whatever it is that you use, Skype your conversation pal and practice and go over what you learned in that book that week. Because let me tell you, in these classes, during the high season, you're probably one of eight people. In the slow season, you're probably one of four people if you're lucky, which is awesome. And sometimes these language schools have, you know, 20 or 30 people in their classes, depending on the school. I was very lucky that I picked schools that had smaller class sizes. But even then, we're in class, you know, for an hour period for one particular thing. An hour for grammar, an hour for words, an hour for listening practice, an hour for whatever. Um, in that hour, they divide it amongst the eight people, which means you're getting less than like, you know, they're probably eight minutes of individual work per person. If you go over, you know, the four hours you do in that class in that day, 
you're talking, what, less than 40 minutes, 35 minutes of one-on-one -on -one practice with the teacher. If you guys just go over this book on your own, which you can go over the words on your own. You don't need a special teacher for that. You can go over the kanji on your own. You don't need a special teacher. Uh, grammar is where you need to work on it, but you go over the grammar, work through the workbooks, whatever the book came with that you have. Uh, listen to the CDs. Most of these books come with audio CDs to help you get your listening up and hearing how to pronounce and that type of stuff. And then once a week, Saturday, Sunday, what used to be mine, Skype your friend. Go over what you went through and, and use it in sentences and then have him correct you. And then at the end of that Skype sesh, the next day you'll do it in English for him. He'll go over his English textbook and you just help him make it sound more native, make sure his pronunciation's good and you trade it and it's free. It doesn't cost any money. So now you're getting more time than you would get at a immersion school one-on-one -on -one with a native. You're getting it for free and you're getting the same education. I mean, they're teaching this book. They aren't you know, supplementing it with the, oh, here's 30 other books, here's our own materials. I've been to these schools, guys. They just take this book and they basically, any practice that's in this book, they photocopy it and hand it out to you. Or they uh, photocopy the workbook and hand it out to you. Like, literally, what is this book, like 30 bucks? You could get through your N5, which Genki One's about an N5, for 30 bucks, because you have a free conversation pal, you're using Memrise, which is a free app, and you're surrounding yourself with Japanese music, Japanese media, Japanese books, you're going to Japanese stores, you change your settings on your phone and stuff to Japanese so you're around it and you're using the language that you picked up in this book every day. So you're gonna learn it faster. This is literally what language immersion is and you could do it for pennies instead of paying a school $300 a week to do it. And like I said, I'm not hating on language schools. I love the people, like the, the most recent school I went to was Genki. I love the people there. I'm going back to Japan soon and I'm going out to, to dinner with a lot of those guys and hanging out with them. But I'm trying to help the people that are past the beginner level and before the advanced level, just save thousands of dollars. Do the same method and really work on it. And then when you're hitting it hard, maybe spend a month at a language school to practice everything that happened in that intermediate level. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? What do you think of language immersion schools? Are any of you thinking about going? Did this video change your mind? Did it encourage you to actually go? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you guys like this video, please consider liking it down below. It helps me tremendously with this dumb new algorithm. And if you did enjoy this video, check out my other videos. I put out a live stream every Saturday and a Japan type video on Wednesday. And if you guys like it, consider subscribing. I do this for fun and for free and I hope many of you guys would enjoy. So yeah, that's about it for this week. I'll see you guys on the Anime Night live stream on Saturday. Happy birthday, Midori. He's one of my fans. He asked me to shout him out. Um, and get ready for a Patreon page coming up. I can't tell you exactly what I'm doing because it's unique and special, but be prepared for a, another Return to Japan series. I'll give you more details when we're closer. That's about it. Be kind to one another. Don't just yell in a vacuum. Uh, I will see you guys on Saturday.